Welcome back. Uh, we are going to be looking at the cell cycle in this video, so let's jump into it. The cell cycle is this well-ordered series of events that encompasses cell growth and eventually division and will ultimately yield two daughter cells. Cells destined for division progress through these meticulously timed phases that involve specific growth phases, DNA replication, and then finally, when the cell's ready, division into two genetically identical daughter cells. That's very important. Um, genetically identical daughter cells are the product of this cell cycle. Um, there's gonna be two primary phases. We have interphase, this is where growth and DNA duplication are gonna occur. Um, and then the mitotic phase, this is where DNA is uh, replicated and cell content segregate leading to cell division. Uh, typically following mitosis, uh, cytokinesis will occur, dividing the cytoplasm and yielding two daughter cells. Uh, there are some weird things where the cell cycle will arrest and hold, um, waiting for the rest of it to, to finish out. And there's a bunch of signals. And we'll, we'll talk about a couple examples of that later. In interphase, the cell engages in regular activities. Um, and then it's also, as it's engaging in these regular activities, preparing for cell division. So um, think of it as the period where it's, it's growing bigger, it's making all the organelles it needs, it's making all the proteins and various other structural components that'll be necessary for it to go through cell division. So transitioning from interphase to the mitotic phase um, requires a whole series of prerequisites, kind of like how you have to take specific courses before you can take more advanced ones. Kind of the same idea. There are checkpoints that the cell must get through um, before it finally goes through division. So interphase has three stages we're gonna look at, G1, S, and G2. In G1, uh, although outward changes are very minimal, uh, the cell is highly active at the biochemical level. It's accumulating all the materials needed for chromosomal um, DNA replication, um, all the associated proteins, because we're gonna go from these particular copies to doubling that. So we need to make a lot, a lot of nucleotides, a lot of the proteins that will hold um, the chromosome in place, um, along with an energy reserve because chromosome replication is energy intensive. During S phase, uh, nuclear DNA in its semi-condensed chromatin state, um, it's gonna undergo replication, resulting in the formation of two identical sister chromatids per chromosome. Um, and they're firmly connected in the center, and we'll have some images later that you can look at. Um, that center is called the centromere. Um, each chromosome, is now duplicated. The centrosome is crucial for the mitotic spindle, um, is, which is also duplicated and consists of a pair of centrioles. If you do not recognize the words I'm using, go back to chapter three and look back at those cell structures. You might find it really helpful to have a like one of the pictures of the structure of the cell with you while we're talking through this so you can see it. Um, centrioles aid in organizing cell division. Um, although they're absent in some eukaryotic species, um, like plants and some fungi, um, would use something a little different. Uh, and they tend to have set sides of a cell, polarity, that um, animal cells lack. So you can think of the centrioles as kind of these like, anchor points that eventually are going to be part of pulling the DNA um, evenly away from each other. All right, the G2 phase is where the cell is going to replenish its energy stores. It's been working hard. At, up to this point, and it needs to make a bunch of things before it can move on to the next phase. So essential proteins for chromosome manipulation, things like um, uh, tubulins and motor proteins, so it can move them apart. Um, it's gonna duplicate certain organelles, and we're gonna start taking apart the cytoskeleton uh, because the cell is about to change shape. So we're gonna we're gonna take apart the cytoskeleton so that the cell can get ready to rebuild its internal network, focusing on pulling the chromosomes apart and redirecting organelles evenly to both sides of the new daughter cells. Um, there can be additional growth that goes on during G2. Um, these preparations 
have to be completed before the cell can enter mitosis. And later we'll talk about some of the things the cell does to ensure that these steps happen in the right order and that everything is in place before it starts to go through mitosis. Now finally, we can dig into the mitotic phase. This is gonna generate two daughter cells. Um, the nucleus and the cytoplasmic contents are all gonna undergo some form of division, right? You've gotta divide this stuff up evenly. So the mitotic phase is gonna have several very important steps that involve um, alignment, separation, and movement of those duplicated chromosomes to opposite poles of the cell to ensure that each daughter cell gets all the parts it needs. Um, and then finally, once everything is evenly separated, then the cell can go through a division, right? And we have two identical daughter cells. Mitosis is made up of five dedicated stages to this nuclear division. Um, and then finally, after, after the division has been done, we're going to have cytokinesis. So we have um, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then finally cytokinesis, where we'll have the actual splitting of the cytoplasmic components and, and generating our two daughter cells. Our initial phase is prophase, where we're going to have a series of events that allow the cell to access the chromosomes, all right? Because, right, the nucleus is very protected. So there's that nuclear envelope around it, which is made up of phospholipid bilayer. And that lipid bilayer, it's got to go. We can't separate the chromosomes evenly if they're all trapped inside there. So it's going to break down into vesicles. Um, the Golgi apparatus, the endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleolus, all of these are going to kind of break apart and disperse to some extent. Uh, the centrosomes are going to move apart and microtubules are going to extend between them and we're going to start seeing visible sister chromatids. That's that X shape we're familiar with chromosomes having, right? Um, prometaphase continues the process um, and we're going to see the nuclear envelope completely vanish. It's going to disappear. Um, the mitotic spindle is going to develop fully and the chromosomes are going to become even more condensed. We're going to really start recognizing that shape. Um, sister chromatids will attach to spindle microtubules via kinetochores. Um, metaphase aligns all the chromosomes at something we call the metaphase plate, which is basically the center of the cell. Um, and it's between the two poles, right? Because we're going to pull these things apart. Um, this is going to, at this point, we're going to maintain tight sister chromatid connections. We want them right there together because if they start pulling apart too soon, you might end up with one of them connecting to the wrong spindle and then get two copies of the same chromosome moving to the wrong side. We want them to divide nice and evenly. Finally, in anaphase, we're going to see all the chromosomes at the metaphase plate that's nice and lined up between the two, right? We're gonna have that tight sister chromatid connection, and then we're gonna start seeing them pull apart, okay? Uh, and it's gonna happen quickly. So we'll, they're nice and lined up, nice and tight, and then that connection is gonna break, and they're gonna start pulling away um, towards those opposite centrosomes. And the cell is gonna get kind of long, kind of football shaped when this happens. Um, telophase, uh, is going to reverse the prior phases events, basically. So now the chromosomes have reached the two poles. They're going to start to loosen up. They're going to decondense, and nuclear envelopes are going to reform, right? Because we've got to protect our DNA. We don't want to play around. It being um, not surrounded by the nuclear envelope puts your DNA at risk. Think about your skin. You know, if you're outside while cell division is happening, which you are, um, your DNA, when you go through those cycles, is exposed to more... Um, UV and things during that brief period. So that nuclear envelope is going to reform quickly. Um, let's see, uh, the mitotic spindles are going to start to break down because we don't need them anymore, but we do need all that tubulin uh, that was used to make it. Um, and they're going to, we're going to start reassembling the cytoskeleton um, to do, you know, for our new daughter cells. All right. And then finally, we're going to have cytokinesis. So our chromosomes have separated appropriately. All the different cell materials, the components, mitochondria and things, have separated across the cell. Um, and we're going to see this contractile ring start to form. 
Um, this is particularly true in animal cells. It, it's a little bit different. We'll talk about plant cells in just a second. Um, but right, we remember we had all of that cytoskeleton components that started breaking down away from the spindles and stuff. We're going to see this actin-based cytoskeleton components start moving towards that middle area where, where the metaphase plate used to be. And it's going to start forming this ring that pulls the membrane in tight. So we get kind of these two bubbles, all right? Uh, and it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter until it splits apart. And now you have your two separate, um, separate daughter cells. Now, plant cells, they can't form that cleavage furrow, what we call it, uh, because they have cell walls. So instead, during interphase, the Golgi apparatus is going to accumulate all the needed materials and break into vesicles. And then in telophase, these vesicles move to the metaphase plate and fuse. And they're going to form a new cell plate right in the middle. Um, and as the plate enlarges, it's going to merge with the cells, cell walls periphery. So kind of instead of splitting two cells apart in plants, they basically build a new cell wall and membrane in between. Um, and let's see, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of things involved in that in enzymes. Um, use the store glucose to create that new cellulose cell wall. They're going to come out and release a whole bunch of glucose into the space. Um, Golgi membranes become the new plasma membrane uh, on both sides of the cell wall. It's a really, really interesting process. Um, and it really helps, I think, maybe understand that when you talk about the phospholipid bilayers, they're around, right? All of those membrane-bound organelles it's the same basic structure as what's around the whole cell. Um, they just have slightly different protein, um, like receptor contents and things, depending on where they're at, but they can change. They're very dynamic. All right. Some cells are going to deviate from this usual cell cycle sequence. And when the new daughter cell uh, is formed, you know, some cells, they're going to start the process all over again very quickly and divide again and again and again. Think of things like your skin cells or the cells lining your intestine, stuff like that, have high turnover rates. But some cells go into something we call G0. And this phase is not actively preparing for division. Uh, we call them quiescent. Uh, they're inactive when it comes to reproduction. It's not to say that they're inactive in other ways. Um, they, But they're not really in the cell cycle. Um, so certain cells will temporarily enter G0 and then return to G1 once they get a signal. Others, like mature cardiac muscle cells and nerve cells, um, permanently are in G0, or at least very, very rarely exit G0. Um, and they just stay there indefinitely. Your neurons are a really good example of that. Uh, neurons can live like 80 years. And there is some cell division that occurs, but it is very minimal. Um, and like cardiac cells, one of the reasons why after like a heart attack, you can't just, oh, well, your heart will heal itself. It'll regenerate those things. It really doesn't. Those cells don't divide um, or very, very rarely divide. And there's a lot of research being done to try to figure out how you can trigger that division. That opens up a whole other range of things that we're not going to talk about here. But feel free to look it up because there is there's some really cool stuff. All right. Let's talk a little bit about control of the cell cycle. So the duration of the cell cycle varies significantly, even among cells within the same organism. In humans, cell turnover rates range from just a few hours um, during like early embryonic development in particular, um, to an average of two to five days for like your epithelial cells. Um, there are certain specialized cells like cortical neurons, um, or like I mentioned before, cardiac muscle cells uh, that spend basically their entire lifespan in that G0 or, or very rarely divide. Um, the length of time spent in each phase of the cell cycle can also differ. Uh, for rapidly dividing mammalian cells grown in culture, um, the entire cell cycle can take about 24 hours, with G1 lasting about 11 hours. So that remember, that was that phase where we're making all the things we're going to need to move forward, right? Um, the timing of the cell cycle events is also regulated both by internal and external mechanisms. So let's take a look at those. So ensuring precise duplication and distribution of chromosomes in the daughter cell is crucial for maintaining genetic integrity. You know, we don't want to accidentally 
not send two, you know, we want one copy of chromosome one in each daughter cell. If one daughter cell gets two copies of chromosome one and the other daughter cell gets no copy of chromosome one, that cell is not going to be able to function. Neither of them are going to function properly, in fact. So errors during this process um, can result in mutations that um, can then perpetuate, can carry forward into future cell divisions. Um, this is, we see this sometimes in cancers, all right? So to safeguard against this, your internal control mechanism operates three critical cell cycle checkpoints. One at the end of G1, another during the G2 to mitotic phase, so G2 to M phase, um, and then at metaphase, where the cell cycle can pause until conditions are favorable. All right, so that G1 checkpoint, it's going to assess whether conditions are favorable for cell division. Uh, it serves as kind of a pause point where once the cell, you know, once the cell enters the cell division process, we're, we're kind of committed. So this is like a little space of, oh, maybe we're not ready yet. Uh, it evaluates how much uh, cell reserves are available. So how much energy does the cell have, protein stores, enzymes, all of that. The size of the cell is also checked. Um, and it's going to check the DNA for damage to make sure that the DNA, the chromosomes themselves, are intact. If all the requirements aren't met, the cell will not enter S phase. All requirements must be met to move forward. The G2 checkpoint, it's going to prevent entry into mitosis if specific conditions aren't met. It's going to, again, it's going to assess cell size, right? So we, we checked that at G1, right, before we went on and did our, um, duplicated our DNA. We're going to do it again here. We're going to check. Is the cell size appropriate? Do we have enough reserves, protein reserves? And most importantly, it's going to check that the chromosomes replicated properly and that the DNA is not damaged. So we're going to do that twice, right? Once at the end of G1 and again at the end of G2 before it moves into the mitotic phase. The M checkpoint is going to occur, so that mitotic checkpoint, it's going to occur late in metaphase before we move into anaphase. And it's going to ensure proper attachment of the sister chromatids to the spindle microtubules, okay? So since sister chromatid separation in anaphase, it's irreversible, okay? Once that happens, we're, we're done, we're moving. Um, the cell cycle is going to pause before that happens until all the kinetochores, right? So that's that place where the um, mitotic microtubules are going to attach to each sister chromatid um, until all of those on the sister chromatids are attached securely to those spindle fibers from opposite poles. So the cell has a whole range of enzymes and things that check for that. And until that happens, um, the cell will not progress. Um, and in fact, if things go really awry at this point, um, special cells are recruited in to destroy that dividing cell to make sure that it can't send um, damaged chromosomes into the next generation of cells. All right, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Um, I, I strongly recommend drawing out the cell cycle, both the, the little circle graph that it showed where it showed the different phases, but also practice drawing out the mitotic phase, each step of that and what's happening. Try to draw it yourself. You know, you don't have to do 23 chromosome pairs. You could instead just do it with four just to practice, practice and give explanations, label the parts. It'll be so much easier to recall what's happening at each phase if you've spent a little time really drawing it and thinking about it. Um, I will see you next time where we're going to discuss the connection between cancer and the cell cycle.